we have been discussing atomic term symbols. Term symbols are spin multiplicity and value of the, the orbital angular momentum, quantum number. Yes. So, uh, the problem is determination. and L values of a, arising from an electronic configuration. Uh, last example we had done was the 2p, 3p uh, part of a, a, a atomic electron configuration. There are two open subshells. And then we had obtain the result that the total spin quantum number from such a configuration, uh, which contains just two electrons, possible values of S are 0 and 1, and possible values of L are uh, 2, 1, 0. And then we said, because the two subshells are different subshells, uh, all combinations of S with L are allowed. So, uh, we have, according to the L values, D, P, and S. These are the letter codes corresponding to L. And then, uh, S equals zero means multiplicity is two times S plus one. So when S is zero, multiplicity, spin multiplicity is one. And also S equals one uh, is allowed with the, the L values here. In this case, spin multiplicity is two times one plus one is three. So we have six terms uh, arising from this electron configuration. Now let us consider 2p2 configuration. We may write it equivalently as 2p times 2p. Uh, That case is different from this case because here one of the electrons is in 2p subshell, the other electron is in 3p subshell. On the other hand, here both electrons are in the same subshell. Uh, this means that uh, a p subshell has p1 p0 and p-1 orbitals. There are just three orbitals. Uh, in, in, uh, in this case, we have to select one of these orbitals for the first electron and uh, another orbital from the same set for the second electron. So, uh, and we have to Remember the Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, 
Now, let u and v be uh, two different uh, orbitals. From the configuration, from the electron config, one electron in U, one electron in V, we can construct U times V plus V times U. And u times v minus v times u. The electron labels are 1, 2, 1, 2 uh, in the orbitals from left to right. Now, these are space part uh, of the total wave function. Remember, Here, these are space parts. Now, according to Pauli exclusion principle, when uh, all four variables of the two electrons are interchanged, the, the total function must change sign. All right. Uh, we know that the, uh, for the for two electrons, there are two types of uh, spin functions. Uh, in one type, the spin part is uh, antisymmetric with respect to spin exchange. It was alpha times beta minus beta times alpha. This is antisymmetric with respect to spin exchange, and this corresponds to s equals zero. On the other hand, we have alpha times alpha, alpha times beta plus beta times alpha, beta times beta. These correspond to s equals 1, triplet spin functions. And these are all symmetric with respect to electron exchange. OK. Now coming here. Because this space part is symmetric with respect to spin exchange, uh, this function can be combined only with an antisymmetric spin, spin part. What is antisymmetric spin part? It is this expression. It, it means it must be singlet. So this corresponds to s equals 0, or triplet, uh, singlet. And on the other hand, uh, this expression for the psi space, sp space part of the uh, total function, because it is antisymmetric with respect to space exchange, it must be combined with a symmetric spin function, one of these. And what do you see here? These are symmetric spin functions, two electron spin functions correspond to S equals 1 which means triplet. OK. Now then, we turn to the, this problem.
We take uh, <coughs> well, uh, for s equals one. We need to construct such a space uh, functions which are antisymmetric with respect to uh, space exchange of the two electrons. Uh, it means that you, uh, the orbitals we select from this set must be different. Otherwise, this will give zero. So if I select P1, uh, for one of the uh, electrons times P0. Now, I, to make it uh, converted into antisymmetric form, we have this expression, which corresponds to what you see over here. Please note that I have omitted the uh, principal quantum number of the orbital uh, to here f to simplify the uh, notation, but I mean uh, 2p, 2p1, and 2p0 in such symbols. Now we can write these are eigenfunctions of uh, z component of the total angular momentum. Uh, for example, P1 times P0 is an eigenfunction of Lz in which uh, this is ML finding ML is very simple ML is sum of a small ml in the orbital product. So there are just two factors in the orbital product. Uh, what is the small ml value for this for p1 what is the value what is this notation it is l ml type in which l is letter code so the subscript of the orbital is telling you what ML is. So what is the subscript in this, in this factor? One. One. Plus, what is the subscript in the, in the next factor? Zero. There are just two uh, factors in the orbital product. So we stop here. What is the net result? One. So this is ML equals one. Now, for the elect uh, I, I may use P1 for one of the electrons and P minus one for the second electron. These two orbitals are different. If I do that, P1 times P minus one then the antisymmetric combination is P this one. Now, uh, please note that th the first term has the same ML as the sec second term here. So the, this full function is also eigenfunction of LZ. In other words, what was it? P1 times P0 minus P0 times P1. Uh, 
uh, this ML, for in this case, is just one. Similarly, uh, ML for the first term is one plus minus one gives zero. This one also gives zero. So this is uh, a, po a possible two electron space function with ML equals zero. Now, I may take p minus 1 for one of the orbitals and p0 for the second one. These two orbitals are also different. Therefore, I can form antisymmetric combination, p0 times p minus 1. And in this case, ml value will be minus 1. So we have seen that for s equals 1, uh, we have obtained uh, three such functions in which ML changes from 1 to 0 to minus 1. We, now, from this information, we conclude what should be L value. If there are just, if ML values range between plus 1 and minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, uh, what must be the value of L, capital L? L has to be 1. So, uh, if it, now the, t the term symbol, let us write it here. If L is 1, what is the letter code? P. Uh, S value is 1, therefore mu spin multiplicity is 2 times S plus 1. So this is a triplet P term. Uh, notice that when the two orbitals are, are different, t uh, both triplet P and singlet P are allowed. But we will see in this case that not both are allowed because of Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, now, let us look at uh, S equals zero case. If S is zero, it means it, uh, the spin part is a singlet function. Uh, but the two electron spin function for S equals zero is anti-symmetric with respect to spin exchange. Therefore, the space part uh, must be symmetric with respect to spin exchange. So, we take uh, P1 orbital for one of the electrons and we can also take P1 for the second electron also. Uh, this function, P1 times P1, is symmetric with respect to electron exchange. Therefore, uh, it does correspond to uh, S equals 0. Now, the ML value for this product, 1 plus 1, gives 2. Now, we select other <coughs> uh, two orbitals, like P1 times P0. This will give a total uh, ML to be 1. The two orbitals are different. Therefore, I, we uh, construct the symmetric combination, P0 times P1. This is also symmetric with respect to electron exchange. It is necessary because the spin part is anti-symmetric. All the functions here must be symmetric. Now, 
I select the two orbitals from that set to give ML equals zero. I may select P1 and P minus one, and also P0 twice. So here we have P0 times P0. This is symmetric, but there is another uh, function possible, which is obtained by selecting P1 and P minus 1. Now, these two orbitals are different, so the symmetric combination is P minus 1 times P0. All right, we can continue in this manner uh, to obtain two more functions for ML equals minus 1 and ML equals minus 2. Now, uh, when we look at the first term, uh, first expression, here ML is equal to 2. There is only one such uh, product which gives ML equals 2. Therefore, we conclude that L has to be 2. Uh, remember, for a given L, ML must be between plus L and minus L. So if you know the largest value of ML, what does it tell you? It, it tells you the value of L. Therefore, this, this one corresponds to L equals 2. When L is 2, ML value must 2, 1, 0, minus 1, and minus 2. Uh, L equals 2 means this is a D term, and it's a singlet, so this is a singlet D term. Now, this expression for ML equals 1 must belong to singlet D because there is only one such expression. When we come to here, ML equals 0, we see that there are two different functions. Both give ML equals 0. Now, one of these should belong to ML equals 0 of singlet D term, but there is, a, there is another function here, a second function. It signals that there should be a new term, also singlet, because these are all correspond to, these all correspond to S equals zero. Now, the, the other function has ML equals zero, therefore its uh, L value should, must be zero. So we have A singlet S term. This is a triplet P term. In conclusion, there is a singlet D, there is a triplet P, and there is a singlet S terms that arise from the 2P2 electron configuration. Uh, remember, in the case of uh, this case, 2P, 3P case, the L values we obtain are the same, of course, D, P, and S. Uh, but both multiplicities were allowed, both singlet and also triplet. Uh, in the case of Uh, this example, in which the two electrons, the two orbitals, the two electrons are in a way equivalent uh, because the, uh, the orbitals are, the subshells are the same for the two electrons. 
then uh, we may say half of the terms are allowed. Uh, this discussion uh, explains the how to uh, obtain the term symbols of uh, open shells. Uh, by using directly mathematical uh, expressions for the uh, space part of the two electron uh, state function. There is an equivalent and alternative way uh, using spin diagrams uh, to arrive at the same conclusions. Uh, there is a file in the uh, Otto class uh, among the lecture notes. Uh, it's called Chem, Chem 350 notes uh, dash 7 dash supplement atomic term symbols. It's a PDF file. Uh, so I have taken a printout of it. You should also take a printout. Uh, this is, these notes are describing same things as in the main part, but using spin diagrams. So I'll explain uh, shortly this, this problem using sp uh, spin diagrams. Now, we start by representing each of the orbitals by uh, dashes like this, and then indicate the ML values, 1, 0, minus 1. We have just two electrons. We start with highest, we start by uh, inserting the electrons into the orbitals uh, by making sure we have the largest uh, ms value. So for ms equals 1, because we have two electrons, the highest value of ms is, uh, is 1, 1 half plus 1 half. Now, how do we represent this? By placing the two alpha spins into two different orbitals, I have placed the uh, spins into the orbitals such that ML value is also highest. In this case, what, what is the total ML? You just add up the small ML values which are indicated under the uh, dashes, 1 plus 0. This one is unoccupied. So we have 1 for uh, ML, total ML. Now, there is only one such spin diagram uh, that can be drawn in which MS equals 1 and ML equals 1. This tells us that uh, L has to be 1 and S has to be 1. So that spin diagram is showing one of the uh, possibilities for the uh, triplet P term.
All right. Next, I draw a spin diagram which, uh, which, in which ms is equal to 1, but ml will be 0. I can obtain it directly from the uh, first diagram. Just shift it to the right, this second one. This diagram is showing the ml equals 0 of the uh, uh, triplet P term. Uh, I can also obtain ml equals minus 1 uh, diagram, but this is not necessary. In, in applying this procedure, it is enough to uh, restrict yourself to positive values for either MS or ML. Uh, the negative values are automatic. So there is no need to do them. Just start with the highest and, uh, and try to reach to the uh, lowest positive or zero value. So this is uh, enough for the triplet P term. Next, I examine spin diagrams that will give ms equals 0. This means one of the uh, spins must be up, the other spin must be down. What are the possibilities? This is one possibility. in which this orbital is doubly occupied, but with opposite spins, because ms must be 0. Here, this will give me, what is the ml value here, this ml? Sum of small ml values for each electron. ml for the first electron is 1. ml for the second electron is also 1. Therefore, total ml is 1 plus 1 which is 2. There is only one such spin diagram in which ms is equal to 0 and total ml is equal to 2. This means that L has to be L has to be 2. Therefore, the term symbol is a D term in which spin multiplicity is singlet. This is a singlet D. Now, when L is equal to 2, uh, you should look for L equals 1, L equals 0, uh, minus 1 and minus 2. As I said, it is enough to continue up to L equals 0. Uh, to obtain the Next, the next lower value for uh, ML, you may shift, uh, you may start from this diagram and shift it to the right. So if you take this electron to, to this orbital, which is next to it, then uh, ML will be 1. But we, we can draw two diagrams, two uh, different diagrams, in which one electron is up, the other electron is down in the same orbital. So this is also one, two. Uh, the first electron may have a down spin, and this electron may have a up spin. So whenever the uh, electrons are unpaired, here, the electrons are paired, all right? Here, the elect in this diagram, the electrons are not paired because they are in different orbitals, all right? Whenever uh, there are unpaired electrons, we are going to have s uh, more than one spin diagram. In this case, we have just two spin diagrams. Uh, we 
draw just one of them and then indicate how many by putting number of different diagrams, number of equivalent diagrams by a number and then just enclose it between parentheses. So this means that there are two diagrams which will give ML equals one. One of them is this one, the other is that one, but we just draw one of, one of them and indicate how many by a integer there. All right, let us see if this spin diagram gives a new term or not. Now, there are two of them. One of them must be coming from singlet D term, from, because there must be ML equals one also. What about the second one? Now we have to remember triplet P term. Triplet P term has ML equals one. Uh, but it, it, it should also have a component in which ms equals zero, because just like ml has to be between plus l and minus l, uh, same thing is true for s and ms. ms must be between minus s and plus s. So here we have shown ms equals one of the uh, triplet p term, but uh, this triplet p term must also have ms equals zero. Uh, component. This two is telling us that one of them must belong to ms equals zero of the triplet p term, and the other one uh, corresponds to ms equals uh, ml equals one of singlet d term. There are just two such diagrams, which means there is no new thing. There is no new term. Now, then, we look at the diagrams for. Uh, ML equals zero. Again, you may use the diagram just above it. Uh, to get the ML equals zero, you may take this electron to this orbital, keeping the first one there. I have take, taken it so that one minus one will give zero. And how many, there is another diagram, isn't it? In which the uh, spins are reversed. So there are two such diagrams. Uh, there is another diagram, spin diagram, in which I, I can move or shift this electron to, the, to its neighbor. In that case, we have a paired electron uh, in the uh, ML equals zero part. So how many spin diagrams uh, did I obtain with MS equals zero and ML equals zero? Two here, uh, two here plus this, this one. The total is how many? Three. Now we have to explain uh, these three different spin diagrams. One of them must belong to uh, ML equals zero of singlet D. The second one must belong to uh, ML equals zero of triplet P. That, that makes two. But there is a third one because there are three such spin diagrams. What do we conclude? There must be a new term. And this new term has, because ML is zero, uh, L has to be zero. So then we are finished. The total uh, or the possibilities are singlet D, triplet P, and singlet S, S terms. Uh, we can check whether we have obtained uh, 
correctly all the term symbols by counting number of states. How many states are meant by this term? There is a spin degeneracy and space degeneracy. 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1 gives the total states. So this is multiplicity is 1, so there is no uh, spin degeneracy here, but there is a space degeneracy because of d. d means l is equal to 2. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. Uh, here, there is both spin degeneracy and also space degeneracy. 3 times 3 is 9. Remember, the total degeneracy is 2s plus 1. This is spin multiplicity times 2l plus 1. This is the uh, space degeneracy. This, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and this one is non-degenerate. The total number Now, there is an independent check uh, for the number of states. Uh, any subshell has a ma maximum occupation number. So a P subshell, what is the maximum occupation number of a, a P subshell? Six, isn't it? Uh, if you call that n max, this is uh, two times degeneracy of the subshell, or two times two l plus one. Uh, two l plus one. So for l equals one, n max is equal to 6. Uh, in general, the com uh, this binomial uh, coefficient and its definition is n max factorial divided by n factorial times n max minus n factorial this gives uh, the total number of uh, states that can arise from a subshell like that. Now, if, if you apply this to our problem, Six n max is six for the p subshell. Num el number of electrons in the subshell is two. So we have six factorial divided by four factorial times two factorial. This is six times five over two, and you see that we get fifteen. Fifteen is the number of uh, states that can arise from the 2p2 uh, configuration. This number is the same as what we found in a different way here. All right? So this, this is simply an independent check about whether we have missed something or not by comparing number of states from each term and then obtaining the total number of states uh, with a simple calculation from, from here. And if the two numbers are the same, that tells us that we have done everything correctly. All right? Uh, this supplement also describes the procedure for a 
D2 uh, open shell case and how to obtain the uh, allowed term symbols uh, in that op open shell case. Uh, so you should study that. Now, last thing I, I should point out at this moment is Hunt's rule. Hunt's rule gives the term symbol with the lowest energy. The term with highest uh, spin multiplicity or S max. Uh, sometimes it is uh, possible that there could be s uh, more than one uh, spin diagram with largest S, same largest S. In that case, uh, you select the uh, one with the highest ML value. If more than one uh, diagram with same S max, choose the one with largest ML value. This rule applies to uh, any number of electrons in a, in a single open shell. So, for example, D6 electron configuration, uh, there are five orbitals, one, two, three, four, five. We indicate the ML values, two, one, zero, minus one, Minus two. Next, uh, we insert the electrons into the orbitals to make sure we get maximum S. But to get maximum S means MS must be maximum also. Which means we, we have to have as many upspin electrons as we can. We have six electrons here. So we start by one, two, three, four, five upspins. But there is a sixth electron. Uh, the, the sixth electron, the last electron, must be placed into the orbital with an opposite spin because of power principle. And we place it to the one with the largest ML value. So, now, calculate the MS value, uh, one, two, three, four, five off spins, five times one over two, plus minus one over two, uh, five, 2.5 minus 0 0.5 is two. MS is two. What about ML? ML is obtained by adding the small ML values that you see here. There are two electrons with ML equals two. Two times two plus one, that makes five. Minus one, that makes four. 
minus 2, uh, last result is 2. ML is 2. So this is the lowest energy term according to Hohn's rule. Now we can, we can write, we can say S must be 2 and L must be 2. So this is a D term. And multiplicity is 2 times S plus 1. It is 5. This term, uh, quintet D, uh, is the lowest energy term, uh, which arises from, from the D6 electron configuration. OK, we stop here, and uh, we will do your problems.